So number five is y equals negative 2 square root of x minus 2. Correct? OK. The first thing, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm looking at a problem like this is I want to go back to the transformation function. And hopefully you guys remember that transformation function is y equals a times the square root of x minus h plus k. Hopefully you guys kind of remember that these are your transformations. This is the exact same a, h, and k that we had for absolute value, the exact same a, h, and k that we had for quadratics, as well as for um, cubic functions. So in this case, again, what I would just do is label each one. a is equal to negative 2. All right, so we know that there's going to be a negative 2, right? So therefore, we know, so since a is negative, we know there's going to be a reflect the x-axis. Anytime you're multiplying a function, it doesn't matter what the function is, quadratic, which we've done, absolute value, cubic. Anytime you take a function, you multiply by a negative number, that's a reflection of the x-axis, right? Do you guys remember that? Right? Anytime you take your function and multiply by negative, that's reflecting about the x-axis. Okay. Then we have the x minus 2. So your h is equal to 2 because it's x, opposite, it's x minus h, x minus 2. So you're minusing h. h is 2. So since h is equal to 2, you're going to shift right 2 units. And I'm sorry, this is a reflect to the x-axis as well as 2 is going to be a vertical compression. I should have written that in there. I'm sorry, a vertical stretch. So A, if it's negative, reflects it about the x-axis. It also talks about its vertical stretch, which again, I will explain here in just a second. So, to graph this, the most important thing, in my opinion, is to know what the parent graph looks like. And the reason why I showed you guys this is when you in the parent graph, you guys can create a table, or you can kind of take my word for it. We understand that you cannot use negative numbers into this function, right? You can't plug in a negative number. That is undefined, correct? OK. So we start picking numbers, 0, um, 1. Now, I would not choose the numbers 2 and 3. Because can you take, when you plug in 1, in for, let's plug them in. 0. Square root of 0 is what? 0. So to plot my graph, 0, 0. When I plug in 1, the square root of 1 is 1. So over 1, up 1. Does everybody see that? Now, when I plug in 2, what's the square root of 2? Well, if you guys plug it in your calculator, it's like 1.4, but it's dot, 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 so you're approximating. So I really don't want to plug in this 1.2. If I plug in, or 1.4, if I plug in 3, the square root of 3 ends up being 1.7, dot, 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 something, something. I really don't want to try to plug in one or plot 1.7. However, if I go into 4, so I'm just not going to worry about those. If I tug in 4, what's the square root of 4? 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. Does having these points kind of give me a good idea of what the graph looks like? That's with no transformations. That's what we call the parent graph. And you guys should be able to do that for a quadratic, an absolute value, and a cubic function. All you have to do is create a table. But sometimes you want to create table, you want to choose values. And if you guys remember, I didn't plug in 2 and 3 when I chose my values, right? I chose the values. I chose 0, 1, 4, and I chose 9 as well because those are points that make sense. So now all we're going to do is go back to our factors. So what's happening to this graph? Or let's go back to our transformations. Is this graph being shifted at all left or right? Yeah, it's being shifted where? two units to the right. So all I'm simply going to do is take each of my two points that I found, and I'm just going to move them two points to the right. Does that make sense? Yes? Does that make sense? OK. Then what else is happening to the graph? Well, the graph is now being reflected about the x-axis. So instead of the graph going up, it's now being reflected down. So now, all of the points that I just found, I'm going to reflect about the x-axis. So instead of going up, I'm now going to go down. Does 
Does everybody see how my graph is now being reflected? Yes? And then the last thing is, is being there's a factor of two. You're vertically stretching the graph, right? Vertically stretching. Yes? Do you guys remember y equals 2x squared? What did that do? That made the graph look skinny, right? It vertically stretched the graph. So how does that do that? Well, basically, all that 2 does is multiply all of your y values by 2. You're basically just multiplying each of these y values by 2. So instead of going down 1, you're now going down 2. Instead of going down 2, you're now going down 4. So that's what your function would look like. Okay. So that's it. Now, I kind of ran out of time for number six, so I'm not going to do number six, but I'll tell you guys exactly what